and today I'm coming at you with a Q&A slash life update slash let's just spill all my secrets. Kidding, but seriously guys, I just want to tell you just something real quick. I'm going to try to make it seem like it's not the case, but I'm kind of about to die right now. I, ah. Uh, I just feel like I'm running on no sleep. I worked a 10 hour day, and then I had to go to the mall to see if, okay, I didn't have to do this. That's, that's where I'm lying. I went to the mall to see if I could find some jeans. I couldn't, and then I had to get packages, and then I had to go to run errands, and now we're here, and I put my makeup on 14 hours ago. No, 15 hours ago. I have not touched it up except for lipstick since. What was that since? I also cut my hair in case you're wondering. And I'm not hating it, but I'm not loving it. Basically, I did not even mean for it to be this short. It feels pretty short right now. I mean, not compared to what it's been in the past, but my hair was previously the longest it's been in my reporting career. And as a reporter, everyone always asks me, like, do you have to have like short hair? Is that a thing? Because you see a lot of reporters and yeah, like they have short hair and it's not, no one has ever said to me, you need to cut your hair. Actually, my mom has, so that's a lie. And my mom always tells me I need to cut it and keep it professional looking. But none of my bosses ever said anything like that. And you will see a lot of girls, especially more now than say a decade ago, rocking the long hair but the reason a lot of women do have short hair in the news it's just it looks more professional it looks more clean cut I actually knew of a woman when I uh, at my previous internship who was pretty prominent she ended up getting fired and one of the things that I heard on the DL like from I'm not gonna say who but just from people who worked there was her hair was, they literally were talking about her hair. Her hair was really wild or something like that. And I looked at it, it was just long and curly. Maybe it was a little frizzy, I don't know. But anyway, that always stuck with me and I was like, chop your hair, chop it, chop it, chop it. But no, I honestly didn't mean for this to happen. I went to the hairdresser and said, just a little trim, some angles and layers. And then before I knew it, I was like, oh my gosh, please stop cutting, what are you doing? But of course I didn't say that. I said, thank you so much, I love it. We're just gonna get right into the Q and A. You guys had a lot of questions. I know I've had a lot of changes in my life recently and I seriously have been exhausted today, but I made it my goal. I'm like, you're gonna go home, you're gonna film. I miss you guys, I miss connecting with you guys on here. If you have been, you know, kind of like, where's Clancy been? Follow me on social media, because even when I go on a little hiatus on YouTube and things get busy, I'm always on there. So my Instagram, my Twitter, and my Facebook will all be linked down below that you can follow. And then you can get in on these next time. So let's go to these questions and see what you guys want to know. I'm scared. First question. What is it like living with Zach? What's your favorite part and what's your least favorite part? Which, if you guys don't know, I mean, yeah, unless you've been living under a rock, yes, Zach, my boyfriend, and I moved in together, hence where I am right now. We filmed a video on it, so if you want, you can check that out. But, um, what has it been like living together? Personally, it has been amazing. My biggest fear with moving in with a boyfriend in general, like I've thought about this for years, is I like to be, to have my own alone time. I like to do my own things. I'm pretty independent like that. I don't know, I'm just, I don't know. But because of the way my schedule is, the fact that I work these weird hours right now, it's 4 p.m. and I'm sitting here and no one's here, it allows me to still get my alone time. And I don't know, I mean, I feel like you move in with someone because you like them, you like spending time with them. If you don't, that'd be weird. I mean, it's seriously been amazing. And a big thing is people are asking like, I already saw on here, sleep schedules. How has it been? Like, what the heck? Because I go to bed at like 6, 7 p.m. Whereas he's a normal human, he goes to bed at 10, 11. So do I wake up, is it hard? And I don't, like, as soon as I say goodnight, he tucks me into bed, we say goodbye, I don't hear him. I've been having sleepwalking issues though lately where he's been witnessing me sleepwalk. I, like just last night, I have to ask him what I did because it's like, I remember part of it, but not all of it. And I think I said something about, I thought people were in the bathroom. I don't know, I'll have to ask, I'll check in on that, get back with you guys. But yeah, no, I mean, that is not an issue at all and he says when my alarm goes off in the morning So I actually hit it pretty quickly, which we'll talk about in a second This is kind of going along with something else, but he says he doesn't even wake up So that's amazing and yeah, no seriously. It's been awesome. Zach is like a very clean neat person He's not like a you know, that was like like my brother my brother will just eat like a candy bar and then just throw the wrapper on the counter I guess Zach occasionally leaves dishes in this thing, but it doesn't bother me because he puts them away. Going into this, I knew that he wasn't messy. And that's the first thing everyone kept asking. Either one, is he messy? Or, you know, oh my gosh, who's messier? And seriously, I feel like we're like dead even, except I'm in different ways. And then two, my friend Carly was like, please tell me there are two bathrooms. There aren't. It's fine. We're all gonna live. And I guess maybe my least favorite part is it's kind of hard to go to sleep sometimes when I normally would. Like normally I'd be getting into bed closer to sleep somewhere in the fives and then calming myself down, but Zach doesn't get home until like 5.30 most nights, so I wanna stay up and talk to him. So that's been hard. Maybe I haven't been getting enough sleep, but I don't know. 
it's worth it. And then my favorite part, obviously, is just spending more time together. But yeah, I mean, check in with me in a couple months. We could be in a different ball game. No, I'm kidding. But um, but no, so far it's been amazing. What is the most stressful thing about your job? So obviously, I'm sure you guys all know, I'm a TV news reporter, just moved to Cincinnati. And the most stressful thing is being quick but accurate. So for example, today I was at a shooting for uh, our noon broadcast and at 11.51, I got there at like 11.30, I still have not confirmed anything. I just hope I was hearing a bunch of things from people who were around, but you cannot just report you need to confirm things or like you hear stuff on the scanners that's how you get sent you hear them saying like oh we have like a suspect blah 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 you can't report that it's not always accurate when i say not always i mean a lot of the time it's wrong so at 11 51 still have nothing confirmed and i have to be live doing a full report at noon 11 52 still nothing what am i gonna do like it's stressful like you're not getting information but you gotta get out there and just talk and not only just blabber, but like have some things to say just how quick paced it is and then having to be right at the same time it's hard but being almost two years into this by now it's like um it used to be like a oh my gosh type thing and now it's like a yes like i love that i love the adrenaline of that like i live for that that's what i always think like if i were to do another job let's say let's say i wanted to leave tv news i don't want to be a reporter forever i'm not saying that's the case i'm saying let's say i decide that it would be very very difficult to find a job that matches that like i need that adrenaline that it would just be so hard to sit in an office all day. Not saying that's a bad thing. Like, trust me, you guys, like, when I'm running around in mud or in the pouring rain or in the freezing cold, I'm jealous of you guys. But I know at the same time, it's just like, I'm like, would that fulfill me? Would that be enough? So, yeah, I, 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 I it's the most stressful part, but it's also one of the parts I love the most. Do you miss college? And how would you describe your college experience in one word? No, I don't miss college. Like sometimes like I look back on it and I see the memories pop up on Facebook and I miss it in the sense where I'm like, oh my gosh, that was so much fun. But I, like life after college for me, I've just been loving it. Like I've just been loving being like a real adult, paying my own bills, living on my own, technically not anymore, but you guys know what I mean. Having a job and I've just like, I just love it. Like I don't think I want to go back. I think that was awesome. Um, I'm trying to think if I could describe it in one word, I guess maybe transformative. I literally feel like I was a different human every year of college and just growing more and more. Like freshman year of Clancy to sophomore year of Clancy to junior year to senior year, like different humans. It's it's weird, but I, I literally feel that way. And now I feel like I'm even a different human. I just feel like I grew a lot in college. I had a lot of fun, but no, like I'm, I'm I, I, for those of you who are in college thinking, oh my gosh, I'm about to graduate. What do I do? Life sucks. No, like it doesn't have to. Like life after college has been freaking amazing. If you didn't go into being a 2V news reporter, what would you have done? That's a good freaking question. Basically, in high school, I was considering two things. One, this whole journalism thing. Two, the one that really stuck was law. I've always been kind of intrigued by law. The only thing about law is I feel like it's not as interesting as you think. Like, yeah, you learn all this stuff and it seems cool, but a lot of it's been just looking at paperwork and doing paperwork. And it's, I just know it's not like the freaking, you know, law and order. Like, it, it's not like that. And even now, some of my favorite things to report on are just like court cases and stuff like that. And I just love like deciphering it and giving you both sides. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I don't know. When do you find time to socialize slash date since you work mornings? Fellow reporter here. First of all, hey girl, what's up? It's hard. I mean, this is a hard one, especially working mornings. You go to bed when most people are just chilling out and just getting out of work. You are on a different schedule and not, not to mention you're busy, not to mention you're in a different state than you've ever been in your entire life, at least for my case. So it's not easy. But honestly, my job, okay, so obviously I have a wife right now, but back in the day when I was single, my job actually like made me probably date more than I would have if I wasn't. It's just so easy to meet people with my job. You're just constantly meeting new humans and then being introduced to new humans and then this and then that and then that and then this and so yeah, I kind of feel like I, it's like a weird advantage at the same time, but yeah, like it's hard with this morning schedule. Not to mention, you have to be with someone, if you find a boyfriend or whatever, who can accept it and can understand it, which Zach definitely does. I knew he was a keeper when we first started talking. It was like three o'clock p.m., so that's my evening, which no one understands. Like no one can get it in their head that I go to bed at six or seven, so 3.30 to me is like nighttime. And he asked me how my night was, and I was like, Yes. Yeah, you gotta find someone who understands it because not everyone will. And you make time for what you want to do. So with dating and kind of just, you know, being young from your picture, I can't click on it, but from your picture, you look young. You look like you're in your 20s. If that's a priority to you, you know, being young and in your 20s, go out there, meet people. It, I always say it just takes one person. You just gotta meet one person and then you meet their friends and then you meet their friends. Like, it's just a, a domino effect. It just takes you putting yourself out there and not to mention, 
having some sleepless nights, having some nights where you're not getting that much sleep because, for example, I would stay up on Friday nights until forever o'clock, what it felt like for me, just to be able to go out and be a normal human and pretend like I wasn't up since two in the morning. This one I got a million times. How's your new job been? And it's been amazing. It's been definitely a huge learning curve. Like, all news stations are the same in some ways. Like, you literally realize you're like, wow, no matter where I go, we're all just doing the same thing. But they're different in so many others. The things you cover, the way you cover it. Um, I've gotten directly, like, from what my old boss, like what, what he wanted in Dayton is different than what, what people are telling me in Cincinnati. Like it's just different opinions and it's not easy to get used to. Getting used to different like software on my computer, um, different humans, just being surrounded by different humans. It's weird. It's weird being the new person and literally not knowing anyone. But I have loved it. I'm still in that weird new person phase, um, but it's really cool and it's a really cool learning experience and the people I've met have been seriously amazing and it's going to take a little bit for me to get entirely comfortable with everything. And actually, fun fact, so I haven't sleepwalked in a while and then once I started this new job, I've been sleepwalking like almost every night, not every night, but a lot and it, I, I know what it is. I start sleepwalking when I experience change and when I'm a little bit stressed out and so I guess like it's even more subconscious than it's not like I'm like physically like thinking about this all day but subconsciously like yeah I guess this is kind of stressful like it's a big change like I'm in a new city, I'm in a new apartment. So I've been having a little bit of stress subconsciously, clearly. I wake up 50 times a night, seriously, um, just checking my phone, thinking, oh my gosh, did I miss my alarm? And it's like I'm half asleep and I can't understand that I didn't. And then I'm like, it's 11 p.m. Like, what does that mean? Do, am I supposed to be at work? So that's kind of been annoying. Um, so yeah, there's like a little bit of anxiety involved, but not like literal anxiety. Like, I used to have anxiety back in the day, as a lot of you guys know, and it's nothing like that. I'm not having anxiety attacks. It's not getting in the way of my life. It's just something on the back burner where I'm like, okay, I just need to get the hang of things more, get used to things, get more comfortable. I'm the type of person, I can't explain it. It takes a while for me to warm up to people. So yeah, I'm nice, I'm friendly, but I don't call someone a friend for a while, if that makes sense. Like, I don't just, like you saw my connection with people in Dayton, like I don't just I don't know, it doesn't just happen for me. Like it takes time, it takes time for me to know someone, to like understand them. So yeah, it's gonna take a little bit of time for me to get comfortable and to stop sleepwalking. But, uh, but no, I'm really loving it so far and I feel so happy. What's been the biggest change you've noticed in Cincinnati versus Dayton? So for those of you who do not know, I moved from Dayton, Ohio to Cincinnati about a 45 minute drive. So it's like not far at all. And they are very similar, but just in Cincinnati, there's so much more to do. There's just so much more to see. Like when I'm driving around in my, for my stories and whatnot um, here, just in the couple of weeks I've been here, my eyes are like wide open and I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so much. Like there's this and there's that. And they're like, in Dayton, it just didn't have that. And it was a little bit harder to find things to do. I just freaking love Cincinnati. Do you have a glam team slash makeup hair person at this job? No. If I had a glam team, I would not look like this right now. Um, no, 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 no. Basically, for how it works in TV news, yes, there are people who do get hair and makeup teams, but that's not gonna be in market number 35, which is where I am right now. It's gonna be in market one, New York. Possibly markets two, three, four, like, Basically, the smaller you get, the more it's like, that's not gonna happen. It only happens in the big ones, and in the big ones, it's really, I'm pretty sure, just the anchors, not the reporters who get it. We do, however, get a clothing allowance and a hair and makeup allowance. You do spend money trying to upkeep yourself, trying to look presentable on TV, so it's like, give me some help, please. So, that really does help a lot. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna answer is someone asks, how do you stay so positive and happy? Your life seems perfect, any advice? I want to tell you guys again and again and again and again forever and ever, my life is not perfect. I'm not always positive and I'm not always happy. I think that I do make a concerted effort and a choice to be as positive and happy as I can be at any given moment. That's not to say I'm perfect, that's not to say it always happens, but when things go wrong, when things aren't really, you know, panning out the way you like, which yes, happens to me, you do have a choice. You have a choice to either sit around and cry sometimes you know you might want to do that for a little bit but you also have a choice to pick yourself back up think all right you know what how are we going to make the situation okay and learn from it so i don't want you to think my life is perfect and everything's amazing because it's not but i don't want you guys to think oh okay great she's just another victim let's all be victims like no your mentality should always just be how can i be as happy and positive as possible and it is possible but i'm gonna go because i need to take all of this disgusting crap off my face aka makeup love it and i need a shower and i need to like 
just relax. This has been a long day, but I love you guys, and I wanted to film a video, and yay! So yeah, I'm gonna go, but like I said, if you're not already following me on social media, be sure to check them out. Links down below for the very latest, and that's pretty much it. So thank you so much for watching. If you stuck around this long, and I'll talk to you later. Let me know what you guys want to see in this channel, by the way. Let me know, let me know, let me know. All right, bye.